So welcome to the Archmere Academy three question series with the deans and the directors. We're really fortunate today to have uh, with us Rick Clark, director of an undergraduate admission at Georgia Tech. Rick, thanks a lot for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, well, we have, we have three questions which can certainly be modified, Rick, and you can certainly answer them any way you like, or, or okay. even we can add questions. Uh, so the first question that we ask is, tell us a little bit about something about Georgia Tech that you would want every prospective stu student to know, mm -hmm. and how would they go about finding this information on your campus during their search? Okay, sure. Uh, let's see. I think one thing I would say is um, Georgia Tech is in Atlanta, and most people know that. Uh, but I think the impression a lot of folks have, and honestly, this is true even for people that live 15 miles from here, is that it is a very urban campus. Um, it is an urban setting in that we are right in midtown Atlanta, but the campus itself is very traditional. Uh, so when a student walks on campus here at Georgia Tech, um, they are walking out of the city and onto our campus. Uh, so you kind of look up and you see the Coca-Cola headquarters or NCR or Bank of America or Accenture, but, you know, you are not integrated into the city as you are in some schools around the country that are really like, you know, one classroom building, then a company, then an apartment complex. And it's, you know, kind of that, that setup. Uh, and I, inevitably, when people come here, they're surprised by that every time a family comes here, whether they're from 2,000 miles away or 20 miles away, uh, they can't believe how green it is and how sort of, you know, traditional, quote unquote, it is. Um, so that is something I would, I would point out. Um, I guess the other one that comes to mind is we're known for, for engineering. Uh, we're known for computer science. Uh, but there are four other colleges here at Georgia Tech. And, you know, you have business, sciences, liberal arts, and design. And I do think that often Georgia Tech gets overlooked for some of those uh, and should not be. Um, so just yesterday, for instance, I was over talking with our dean of the College of Business, um, you know, and the way business is going in the future, I mean, the, having the technical chops and the understanding uh, that our students naturally receive by coming here and the way our education is founded is the way of the future. So now a lot of times, while we may not be a traditional business school that's been this like kind of power name for decades or generations, I mean, we actually are sort of, we own the most important real estate in that field right now. And that's actually true in a lot of other uh, majors also. So I would say look beyond what's known um, or what's potentially thought to be Georgia Tech. Great. I would tell you, having been on campus, it's one of the most exciting campuses just in terms of, I couldn't put my finger on it, but you, you feel mm -hmm. the excitement and the energy from the students and the faculty, and I think the location of the campus certainly adds, adds to that. Yeah, for sure. Rick, could you tell us about some recent trends that are going on that have had a major impact in your admission practices? You know, what are those trends and how have they and how do you think will they continue to affect Georgia Tech and your office? Yeah, uh, I would say for us, I mean, the biggest thing we've seen recently is just the continued increase in the number of people applying here. And so therefore, from a supply and demand standpoint, a declining uh, admit rate, um, but also just an inability to really rely much on the numbers. So I would say that trend will continue. I see how and listen to how conversations and committee used to focus a lot more on um, a GPA, let's say, or, or the number of rigorous courses or a test score. And that, I think people would be shocked actually at how quickly we get past the numbers. Um, because largely for a place like this, 35 majors, STEM heavy, they basically all have good numbers. Um, and it gets quickly to other factors. So quickly to, you know, what's your involvement and influence been outside the classroom? Uh, quickly to, the, you know, essays and, and what's the student's voice there, recommendation letters. Um, but then also institutional priorities. Um, and as you know, I mean, there's really only two principles of college admission. 
supply and demand and institutional priorities. Um, and if you don't get a lot of applications and you have the seats, you can lean more on numbers. Um, but as you kind of continue to see more solid people apply, you get into those institutional priorities driving decisions. And that is the trend that we've experienced to where all of a sudden it's all right, you know, what's the soup inside that bowl going to look like? Um, we know we can only have a class of this size. Now, what do we want all of those ingredients within that, you know, bowl of soup to, to be? And so the conversations are a lot more about that. What does the student bring? Um, and how are they going to kind of make this a more dynamic community? And what are our goals? And that was not the case as much five or 10 years ago uh, with conversations in what was driving admission decisions. You know, we, we share on occasion your blog entry on its ad mission. Uh, yeah. In terms of trying to help students realize that there are differences and that difference then leads to fit. I guess if I could ask a, a follow up, students that really get to know Georgia Tech. Yeah. And it is a very unique place. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean in terms of the, the admission of Georgia Tech toward fit? Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, I mean, a couple of things. You know, one of those is we're a public school. And actually, I'm kind of surprised sometimes at how many people don't know that. Um, so we are a public school. And as such, we bring in 60% of our students from our state. And so right off the bat, the mission is driven by the fact that we are, uh, you know, part of a system that we have a responsibility to our state and the citizens here. Um, and so that is going to dictate admission decisions. When the majority of your applicants come from outside the state, and yet the minority of your students can because of your role, um, that plays into admission decisions. You know, is there a kid from Delaware who has higher grades, higher scores, and may actually be a better person than somebody who's applying from Georgia who gets in versus doesn't? Yeah, that happens um, because mission impacts admission, as you said. Um, I think, though, in terms of what are we looking for and how does mission impact that, you know, we are very focused on innovation, uh, very focused on entrepreneurship, very focused on, as you said, that kind of excitement around here, I think, is this sort of accelerator culture, very team and collaboration oriented. Um, back to your first question, I mean, I think one of the things that, um, you know, I would want people to know about us, there's a misconception, I think, towards the tax, this may not be as far flung as where you guys are, but locally more so, there's a, you know, Georgia Tech's got a bunch of kids like down in a basement, you know, looking, looking closely at colored liquids, you know, wearing pocket protectors. And uh, the truth is that this place is all about teams. You know, it is all about leveraging each other's skills and talents and coming together to focus on and solve problems. And that's why I think it is a dynamic place and exciting place to be. And so one thing I would tell you is one of the things we're looking for in the way that mission is impacting admission is we want to see evidence of students ability to collaborate. Right. And so it's not just have you been part of the French club or did you volunteer at the hospital or, you know, are you a well rounded person or did you do stuff outside the classroom, but that's where for us, who we are dynamic and ethos wise does play into the way we read extracurriculars and what we're looking for within that. Um, our motto is progress and service. And so one of the things on our rubric when we're reading applications is, is there evidence of progress and service? Um, this, this idea of moving things forward and bringing people with you. So, you know, for families and students that are looking at colleges, I do think it's a value to read mission statements, to read mottos, to look at words that are commonly used in their, in their writing, because then you can pick up, I think, on what they're, what they're looking for, you know, and how that's different than the school down the road who might have the same ranking or the same academic profile or, you know, whatever. One of our one of our uh, Archmere students that's at, at Georgia Tech, she said after her freshman year, she said, Mr. Bohm, I expected everybody to be super smart. I didn't expect everyone to be so talented in everything else that they do. And I think once you get into that collaborative mode, that's got to be exciting in the classroom and outside of the classroom in terms of what 
those, your students are capable of doing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, you know, I do think all of our kids have something about them. Like there's a girl that I, I take a group of students hiking, um, you know, on this backpacking trip often before the first week you know, of school. We went to Scotland two years ago and I was talking to this girl the other day who was on that trip and she just got back from uh, doing a internship this summer. So she was gone and now she's back uh, this semester. And um, she's like, you know what I love about Georgia Tech is you look at someone and they look really normal, but you're like, I know there's something weird about you, um, which what she kind of means is like, what's wonky about you? What is it that you're so passionate about? You know, and that's kind of exciting is to figure out like, yeah, they're smart, they're talented, they're capable, but there's something about each of these kids that's like, I mean, they are all in on various things, you know? Thanks, Rick. Uh, so our final question is, uh, can you please share something about the application, reading and decision process that you feel families and students don't, really don't truly understand, either something really general or perhaps unique to Georgia Tech's process? And maybe we already touched on some of that, but if yeah. there's anything else you could add to that. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I'd say... I mean, I'm sure you probably hear a lot of the same things around, you know, essays and all of this. Um, what are we really looking for? I think the biggest thing, we're in this mode right now because we're, we're making recommendations for decisions. And so, you know, decisions aren't coming out next week or anything, but we're reading every day and making recommendations. And I think, I think what families, you know, need to know is that... <laughs> it is a very personal process. It's personal for the students applying because they've spent a lot of time and effort and made thought and spent money and committed to this. And it's emotional because of that also. So it's personal and emotional. Um, it's actually personal and emotional on our side too, <laughs> because we're, we're spending time away from family. We're pouring tons of hours into kind of making these decisions. And it's so it's very human. It's way more human, I think, than some people give it credit for. Um, and what's tricky about that is, you know, it's human. And so it's not perfect and it's human and therefore it's not fair and it's human. And, you know, therefore it's, it's slightly flawed. Um, but what I would hope for families and, and students is when these admission com decisions come back, what they're not is predictions of their future success or like value judgments. Um, you know, we were just reading this one public school the other day from Silicon Valley. Um, we got double the number of applications from that high school than we did from the lo the closest local public school to us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're not going to be able to take all those kids from that school. They're amazing. They're largely applying for CS. Um, you know, and when we deny some of those kids who have 1500 plus and a bunch of A's and have eight apps in the app store, that's not personal. You know, that is not a value judgment. They're probably going to get in, in some cases to quote unquote, better schools than Georgia tech who just don't have that same supply and demand situation, you know, that we do for kids like that for that area. And so that's one thing I would hope that families would get a little bit more is admission decisions are not correlative to what we think about a kid's ability. Um, you know, and, and in that regards, like half the time we're like, oh, they're 10 times smarter than I've ever been. Who am I to make this judgment? Um, the, the bottom line is you're, you've got institutional priorities and supply and demand dictating decisions. Um, not what we think of them as <laughs> students or people. Thank you very much. And we've ridden that wave. I think in, in an earlier answer, you said uh, we're, we're making different types of decisions than we were five years ago, which yeah. is exactly when I started this job. So thank you very much for that real upward trend. <laughs> um, I right. think our first year was when you joined the common application. I think there was like a 30% increase in, in applications. Yeah. This has to have a massive change in, in reads, and just, just being able to get through the quantity of applications. Right. Uh, so we, sure. we thank you for making real thoughtful decisions. I think one of the amazing things, if I could just add to, to, to one thing that you said is Georgia, Georgia Tech, and you talked about the human side of it, it, 
is you're still personable, even though you're handling that volume of applications. I mean, our rep, Kathleen Voss, still, we still are able to get her on the phone. She still comes and visits. We still see her at conferences. You're yeah. kind enough to pick up the phone and take requests like this as well. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure that the other people in the admission office are the same with the territories that they mm -hmm. take on, even though you're getting, well, you can, you can answer this question, how many applications do you expect to get this year, Rick? Right now, we're on pace for about 40,000. Yeah, so 40,000 applicants, and I think each of them could get the personal attention that they want in your process, not only in a read, but if, just if I have a simple question about Georgia Tech. Absolutely, no question. And we pride ourselves on that. I mean, there are no cut scores. People think, well, you know, you've got so many good students, don't you just not read anybody below a 1,300? But we read every one of them. Um, People took time to do that. They put a lot of effort into that. They paid money to apply and, and we read them. Well, Rick, I, I want to thank you for your time. This was awesome, uh, as I expected it to be. We wish you the best of luck with all of the, the recommendations ultimately becoming decisions uh, in those, those tens of thousands of applications. We wish you, I hope you have a great weekend and a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it, Chris.